All right, so now let's look at the consequences of unemployment, or what's the impact if we have high unemployment? We can look at it from a social perspective or from an economic perspective. So let's start with the social perspective. When we have a high unemployment rate, we tend to see an increase in crime. There's more violence, more theft, more destruction of property. We also see an increase in the number of suicides and the number of health problems. Because if you lose your job, it's very stressful, right? So you're more likely to then start exhibiting um, heart disease, mental health, stress symptoms. It's hard to deal with the fact that you can no longer provide for your family. And so this can have quite an impact on your family and on society. We also see an increase in terms of uh, domestic violence because very stressful situation when you don't know where the next paycheck is coming from. This class is really about uh, economics, so let's look at the economic cost of high unemployment. So when we look at the economic cost, we're looking at what is called the GDP gap. And the GDP gap is the difference between what our economy could be worth okay, and what it's actually worth. Now, we actually have a name for the size the economy could be. So what do we call that? What is that measurement of how big the economy could be if we utilized all of our land, labor, capital, and enterprise? Well, what our economy could be worth is potential GDP. So we can look at potential GDP in dollar value. What would our economy be in terms of production if we used all of the land, labor, capital, and enterprise versus what is it actually worth? That is, what is our actual GDP? This difference is the GDP gap. So what we do is we take potential GDP minus actual GDP. And you can measure this GDP gap in nominal terms or real terms. Most commonly it's done in real terms so that we can compare that GDP gap over time, but you can really measure it in nominal or real. The difference is is that it's looking at potential minus actual. All right, so let's learn a couple terms here. So the GDP gap is considered to be a recessionary gap if your actual GDP is less than your potential. So if we're not producing as much as we could be, then our economy is not as big as it could be and we're likely in a recession. If our actual GDP, so the amount we're producing, is more than our potential GDP, we have what is called an expansionary or inflationary gap. So first, how is that possible? Well, what if your economy is just really booming and it's growing so quickly that you can't keep up? There's so much demand for goods and services that businesses can't find enough workers. Right, so maybe they're bringing in temporary workers. Maybe we're paying everybody over time. And so we're actually using more than our land, labor, capital, and enterprise. Right, we're having to bring in extra. And so this is an expansionary gap. The challenge with an expansionary gap, of course, is that when you can't find enough workers to make all the goods and you have lots of demand for what you're making, it drives up prices. And so it creates inflation. So we need to be concerned about recessionary gaps because our economy is contracting, our unemployment rate is high. But we also need to be concerned about expansionary gaps, that is our economy is overheated and that tends to drive up prices, which can also uh, hurt the economy. Because think about it, if you can't find enough workers, are you going to be able to make your company run, right? If you have to limit the number of hours because you can't find enough staff, you're not going to be very successful. And if you now have to pay uh, twice as much money for your workers, you can't afford as many, it's going to hurt your business as well. So there's concern about both recessionary and expansionary gaps. So we need to be able to figure out 
what kind of gap we're in. And to help us figure out what kind of gap we're in, we're going to use what is called Okun's Law. So Okun's Law says we can approximate the GDP gap by looking at the amount of cyclical unemployment. So what is cyclical unemployment? Remember, that's unemployment because of the business cycle. So we need to be able to figure out how much of the unemployment that we have is because of the business cycle. So our unemployment for the data we've been looking at is 5.7%. If the natural rate of unemployment and remember first, how do we define the natural rate of unemployment? So this is full employment. And remember at full employment, there's no such thing as 0% unemployment. We're always gonna have some unemployment, right? And people are going to be looking for jobs voluntarily, so frictional. We're always gonna have some structural. So when we talk about the natural rate of unemployment, recall that's four to 6.4% unemployment rate. Now, which do you use? Do you use 4%? Do you use 6.4%? Do you use something in between? Well, there's a bit of a debate among economists as to what the natural rate of unemployment is. The debate is in Canada, that debate is in the US. Now, the natural rate of unemployment they're using in the US, and Canada will use about 5 But there's lots of debate as to what is that actual net. For any assignment for this course, natural rate of unemployment, um, I'll say assume unemployment, and then from there you can calculate the GDP gap. So we need cyclical unemployment. Cyclical, the difference between the unemployment rate and our natural rate. So we're using is 5%. Cyclical unemployment is going to be 0.7%. Now, to calculate the GDP gap, we have to, the formula is based on it being in decimals. So percent is 0.007 measurement of GDP. So remember this can be real or nominal and it just is gap real or nominal. So let's go find P. So let's go back to our StatsCan data. We go back to the main page of our StatsCan data and we go into real GDP expenditure. Okay, we're going to scroll down. At nominal GDP we go with table one. GDP, we could choose tables to and tell they're in real GDP because they say chain dollars. All right, so let's go in. And we can look at the second scene, and you see in real terms the real GDP is 2 million, sorry, 2 trillion, 8,470 million. Notice that it says mills at the top, so that means we need to add to our number. All right, so let's go write that down. Okay, so our actual GDP is going to be 2085470 and our six zeros. To calculate the GDP gap, we're going to take 2 point times 0 0.007 times our measure for GDP, which this time we're using real. So 2085470 and our six zeros. Okay, so if I type that into a calculator, 2.5 times 0 0.007 times 2085470 and six zeros. All right, so what do we get? We get three, Six four nine five seven two. Read that correctly here. Five seven two and five hundred. All right. So if we look at that, we end up with. Let's see. That's hundreds. That's thousands. That's millions. So three point six billion. So our GDP gap here is 3.6 billion.
And what we really want to know is not so much how much in terms of dollar value, although having the GDP gap of 3.6 billion tells us that if we were using all of our labor, we would be adding 3.6 billion to production. So our actual GDP was 2.08 trillion. We want to know what is our potential GDP? How big could we be if we utilize all of that labor? And then we want to take that GDP gap and look at it as a percentage of our potential GDP. So what percentage are we giving up? Okay, so potential GDP, we just rearrange our formula here. We can find potential GDP by taking our actual GDP plus the gap. Now notice here that our gap is a positive number, $3.6 billion. So when we take our actual GDP of two trillion, and I can just write this here in billion dollars, so two trillion is the same as 2085 billion, plus our gap of 3.6 billion. So you notice we add the actual and the gap. So our potential GDP ends up being bigger, right? So our potential GDP is 2085 plus 3.6, and it's 2088.6 billion, which is 2.0886 trillion, right? So notice here the potential GDP is bigger than the actual GDP, because if we were using all of our labor, we would be adding 3.6 billion more to production. So what type of gap do we have? Well, because potential is more than actual, we have a recessionary gap. Now, what if when you did your GDP gap calculation, you took your unemployment rate and subtracted the natural rate but your unemployment rate was lower than the natural rate. Well, if this number here was, let's say, 4.7%, then you would actually end up with a negative cyclical unemployment. You'd end up with a negative GDP gap. So a negative GDP gap tells you you have an, an inflationary gap. That's because when you go and you take your actual GDP, and you add the gap, you're actually reducing that actual GDP down. So then potential is less than actual. So you can tell if your GDP gap is, oh, oh no, I lost my slide. All right, let's go find it again. Ah, I, bumped the, I bumped the bottom of the screen. If your GDP gap is positive, you have a recessionary gap. If your GDP gap is negative, you have an expansionary or inflationary gap. You can also get it from the cyclical unemployment because if your actual unemployment rate is less than the natural, then you're gonna have what type of gap? You're going to have an expansionary gap and your cyclical unemployment calculation will be negative. If your actual is more than your natural, like we have here, 5.7 minus 5%, we get a positive cyclical unemployment, we're in a recessionary gap. So you can see what type of gap you have based on your cyclical unemployment, based on whether your GDP gap is positive or negative, and of course, when you go to find potential GDP, is the potential GDP bigger or smaller than the actual GDP? So we'll just go back our slide here, recessionary gap, actual is less than potential, your gap is going to be positive because the GDP gap, Okun's law, is really meant to find recessionary gaps. If your gap is negative, then you have an expansionary gap. Okay. All right, so we found that our potential GDP was 2.0886 trillion, our actual GDP was 2.085 trillion, the size of the gap was 3.6 billion.
So we can actually find the percentage of potential GDP lost due to unemployment by taking our GDP gap, which is our 3.6 billion, and dividing it by our potential GDP, which is the 2,088.6 billion. Now make sure when you're doing this that you have it in the same terms, so millions and millions, billions and billions, or put in the full number, all the zeros. So if I type this in, I get 3.6 divided by 2088.6 times 100. And I get 0.17%. So how much GDP are we losing because of our unemployment? Well, it's actually kind of small. It's less than 1%. It's 0.17% is how much of our potential GDP lost due to that unemployment. Uh, just to give you a little bit more context, uh, let's look at um, 2011. In 2011, the number was 3.38%. So remember 2008-2009, recession, 2011, we still have a recessionary gap of 3.38%. That number starts falling, so really by 2013, we're seeing it at 1.96%. So it's been falling since 2008, 2009, but we really haven't seen that expansionary gap since then. Okay, so it's taking us a long time to recover from that 2008-2009 recession. Now things have been improving, that gap is getting smaller and smaller, uh, but it's taken us a decade really to get back and close that gap and get back to that expansionary uh, period.